thank you so much for joining me on another episode of Why I Love Flavna County, your local podcast, spotlighting local businesses and local residents on what they love about being a part of Flavna County. So today I'm super, super, super excited to have my guest, Mr. James, with us today. James, thanks so much for the time today. I really appreciate it. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. Yeah, of course. Well, it's been, I've known James for, I think, a few months now, and I've been really excited for him to come on the podcast. This is a long time coming, so I think this will be a lot of fun. Um, But yeah, so thanks so much for coming on. Why don't you kick us off and kind of show us a little bit, you know, getting into it a little easily. What what kind of brought you to Palm Coast? What brought you to Flagler County? So I traveled all the way from beautiful Daytona Beach, Florida. So not That's a so huge far. <laughs> Uh, I was actually born in Daytona and uh, for a short time moved to uh, Palaka. I usually don't tell a whole lot of people that because I guess it's somewhat embarrassing. <laughs> but anyway, uh, after Palaka, kind of came back closer to Daytona, but just shy of it over here in Palm Coast. And I absolutely love it. That's awesome. So you've kind of grown up around this area then? Yeah, my whole life. Wow. So you've really seen it, I'm sure, grow and just expand in ways that like you didn't oh. expect not at all yeah it's crazy <laughs> there used to be uh tons of uh um woods and and stuff that we used to me and my friends used to go out with our bikes and just travel through all the woods and stuff but there's yeah there's hardly any of that anymore especially in Daytona but yeah that is one of the reasons I do like Palm Coast a lot is all the biking trails it's really nice yeah they're so nice I I wish I could explore more I haven't explored yet, but I, I really want to get into it more. I always hear about like the walking trails, the bike trails. They all have something going on there, which I think is really cool. Do you um, have a bike? Do I have a bike? Yes. Yeah. Well, then there you go. That's what I you know. got to do. Hop on it and go. <laughs> yeah, my brother has uh, an electrical bike and I have just a normal bike. So we get... You get one or the other, you know, eventually. We have one way of doing that. But that's super cool. Um, So... You do something I feel like a lot of people don't really think about, but it's like the most important part of having a business. Do you kind of want to share a little bit on what brought you into that um, and what it is that you're doing right now? Absolutely. So I help small, medium sized businesses uh, basically get paid. So um, by providing them with a smart point of sale terminal solution or software where they can manage their customers, loyalty programs, um, time clock scheduling. Uh, but most importantly, taking payments, specifically credit and debit card payments. Yeah, I mean, I used to work at my family's restaurant, and that was like the most important thing to learn was that point of sale system. I, of course, was like 13, so I learned all the hacks and stuff. <laughs> and I learned like the best way to do everything um, for maximize efficiency. Um, so what are some things that when it comes to a point of sale systems that people aren't thinking about as much until you kind of go up and you kind of explain, are there any things that like, oh, I didn't even realize that I'm supposed to know this right. when it comes to my systems? Uh, the There's two things. So one, one is, and it's something that actually uh, drives me insane, but uh, if you're scrolling on Facebook, just just by even watching this podcast now, Google and Facebook, everybody knows that you you talk to a guy or you listen to somebody that sells credit card processing. Uh, I could almost guarantee you you're going to see a bunch of ads that say pay zero percent for all of this fancy, beautiful equipment, uh, pay zero dollars up front, zero dollars a month and then zero dollars for the processing fees. So. Really, there's a lot of companies that offer that shoot. Uh, heck, if, if you really want to, I could do that as well. But there's always uh, a catch because nothing's free, right? So really, the catch is uh, mo more than likely you're going to get put on some sort of a term that has a uh, early termination fee. Um, but if everything's free, who cares, right? But really, when it's 0% processing, uh, everybody makes money off of the credit and debit card processing, the whoever issued the card to you. So whether it's a bank, JCPenney, Victoria's Secret, uh, you got the card brand, Visa, Master, Discover, Amex. There's a lot of rewards that are paid out. It just doesn't come from thin air. Um, and so there's all the, and then the credit card processor, the one that moves the money from point A to point B. So uh, how is it really free? Well, really all they're doing is, and when they hit the pay button, uh, it just adds 3% to the total. They call it a cash discount program. And uh, really kind of crazy thing, if you use a debit card and it's not set up, uh, if it's set up exactly like I just told you and how a lot of these processors are positioning this, 
um, search on Google is uh, adding a fee to a debit card legal in Florida, really in most states, almost every state. So uh, and the answer is no. It, it You could do it right now and it would literally say, no, it's illegal to add a fee for for somebody using a debit card now there's ways around it and there's there's word games that you can play but at the end of the day if your menu price is on the restaurant menu retail say ten dollars and then all of a sudden you use a card specifically a debit card for sure uh, even credit in some cases and it costs you more than what was displayed it's it's technically illegal and there could be some fines involved with that but that's wow. you know i'll skip the second one but Really, that's the biggest misconception. And it's, you know, a lot of the times I'll be meeting with a client and they're like, well, you know, you're selling this to me for X amount of money, uh, but I just saw that they're giving it away for free on Facebook or Amazon. And I'm like, hey, look, you know, if you want to give it a shot, go ahead. But, you know, <laughs> you're going to be in a five year term where I can't help you yeah. if you fall for the day. <laughs> oh, wow. That's crazy. I mean, I, yeah. I know I've gone to restaurants before and they say like there's a processing fee for cards versus cash. Um, right. So that's that's a very interesting tidbit to learn. So now I know. There now. are legal ways to do it and you can do it with credit cards and it has to be a fixed 3%, but business has to pay exactly three and they have to pay, they have to pass exactly three, register with all the card brands. Most people that I've run into, almost all of them are doing it uh, in a non-compliant way. Oh. I'll stop right there. Rant on that forever. <laughs> <laughs> well, now I have the education and hopefully now people are going, oh, maybe I should look more into what my system is because I have no idea what that is. Um, because I know a lot of people, they don't mean to, right? Sometimes it's it's not when it when you're there's so many aspects of building and running a business that we can't look into every details and as much as we want to, it's it's hard, but that's why we have an expert like James who comes in and he does that specific part for us and helps us out. So that's that's, that's why it's great to know someone like that, to have the your cheerleader in the back of the corner going, hey, this is exactly, I want to make sure you know exactly what's going on and this is how I can help you and this is how to help your customers. And and that's why it's, it's you know, it makes sense to start researching these things just a little bit. Um, So thanks for sharing. That was something I had no idea about, but now I do. So I'll, I guess I'll start keeping my eye out for that. Right. <laughs> um, so you've been in the Palm Coast area, I would say, for quite some time. Um, is there anything that you recommend for kind of us new people, um, maybe places to go, events to go to, groups to join, anyone to kind of put themselves out there, kind of get, you know, situated with the community? Right. Yeah, I guess it kind of depends on uh, what you're into. You know, a lot of people, I hear them say there's not a lot to do for kids. Um, but, you know, there's a lot of outdoors things to do where you can go to. There's several parks like we were just talking about hiking, um, bike trails. It's really great to get the kids outside fishing, tons of places to go fishing around here. Um, and then just a uh, short drive over the bridge to Flagler Beach and you have a beautiful beach and just tons of stuff to do over in that area. So yeah, there's not a whole lot of like skating rinks and uh, trampoline parks and stuff like that. And it is funny to me, a lot of people are like, they need to do this here. Well they could be you. I mean, it's just somebody that decides to say like, Hey, I'm going to do this. So right. if you're ever thinking like, Hey, we absolutely need this in Palm coast. Well, be the one that makes the change. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, it might take some capital, but well, yeah, you know. sure. No, I've talked, I exactly, I completely echo your sentiment because I've had so many people on this podcast and that's what they felt too, is that like, oh, no one's doing this in Palm Coast. No one's doing this in the Flagler area. No one's doing it in Northeast, you know, Florida. Um, So I'm going to be the one to do it. And it, it's so amazing to hear those stories of like, hey, I saw this huge gap and I wanted to be the one to fill it. Or I knew that I could at least begin, you know, to start to fill that gap. Um, and then, you know, maybe hopefully someone can take over or whatever that looks like, but there's just been so many people. And that's, what's great about, you know, talking to all these business owners is that, you know, there's so many new things in Palm Coast because they're willing to go out there and make it happen and make their dreams happen, their community's dreams happen. And it's, it's so awesome to watch. Absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, it's uh, not that this is specifically in Flagler, but it is a reason I love Flagler County is, uh, you know, we're kind of smack dab in the middle of, you know, Daytona, St. Augustine, it's close enough to Orlando, Jacksonville, Gainesville, we're kind of right in the middle of all that. So, 
you know, it's not too far to be able to go spend a day somewhere and then come back to our nice little hometown. That's, you know, it growing up in Daytona, it was, uh, it was fun at times, but you know, then you have cheerleading competitions, bike week, race week, et cetera. And it's like, it, it's just, uh, you know, it's nice to be able to go enjoy it, but then come back where it's not crazy. Right. Cause I mean, I've always heard that too. Cause you know, in my age range, people are like, do you have anything that you can do? And I'm like, I don't know what I would need here in Flagler to like do, I guess. Like I have a lot of friends um, who live in Daytona and I'll usually go there and I'll hang out with them, but I've never felt like, oh, they can't come up to Flagler because there's nothing to do here. You know, it's just like, yeah, I guess like, you know, there's a skating rink. I was just at with my friends in Port Orange. Um, you know, if we want to go to Orlando for a day, I know a few of us are going to go this summer. So it's like, it's not that it's not as I think big of a deal as I think some people think it is. And like, this is coming from a girl who like everything used to be like 10 to 15 minutes from where I lived back up in Michigan. But even down here, I'm like, yeah, it's not that big of a deal. Cause like you said, you know, when like, you know, my friends and I went to go see a concert in Orlando and you know, being able to leave that traffic and not have to worry about it was like such a reason like, oh, we don't have to worry about any congestion where we live or any problem getting on or off the freeway. It's all easy going from here. Um, Because that's, that's what you get in Orlando when you live in downtown Orlando. It's scary. (laughs) Yeah. Well, there's a lot of amazing groups that I know you and I belong to that we've met at. We've seen a bunch of events at. So there's always something happening, especially for business owners or especially for people who are interested in business owners here in Palm Coast, here in Flagler County. Like I'm going to go to an event today. Tomorrow, I'm going to probably go to something. Friday I'm going to something so there's there's enough to do I think for me and I'm 20. (laughs) Absolutely. Awesome well James thank you so much for coming on the podcast sharing a few minutes I really appreciate it you educated me on something like really important I would say um that I had no idea was even something to be educated on so I appreciate your time this was a lot of fun. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Macy. I appreciate it. Yeah. And to everyone listening, I really appreciate you as well. And I will see you next time. Bye.